Hi, my name is Jamie, and I'm going to be going over DNA replication in this video. I'm going to mostly be talking about um, DNA replication in prokaryotes, but towards the end I'll talk about some of the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic replication. So the information in this video is coming from lectures 43 and 44. I'm just going to be going over some main bullet points that I think you should be able to pull out of the lecture, but this is by no means everything that you need to know or everything that you can be tested on, so please make sure you study the lecture as well. So we're just going to jump right in and start talking about prokaryotic replication and initiation. And um, everyone should know at this point that prokaryotic cells contain a single origin of replication. Um, and this, it's shortened as OREC. So throughout this video, I'll be talking about OREC or origin of replication. Basically, just know that I'm talking about the same thing. Um, I'm going to start talking about some of the protein molecules that are involved in beginning initiation. So first, eight DNA A molecules um, are going to bind to the R and I sites within the origin of replication. Um, these basically just activate the chromosome for DNA replication. Um, next, the inversion host factors, which we call HIF, and the factors for inversion stimulation, FIS, are going to bind um, in OREC. And next, histone-like proteins, or HU for short, join the complex. Um, at this point, the OREC locus is going to be focused into a right-handed helix. Um, this allows the two strands in the DNA unwinding element. Um, the DNA unwinding element is just an adjacent to the origin of replication. It's not actually within the origin of replication. Um, so these two strands in the DUE are going to melt apart. And this is going to allow um, the proteins and the enzymes that are involved in elongation of DNA, rep of DNA replication to bind. Um, so next, DNA B is going to be loaded as a hexamer onto the DUE, now melted apart. And um, it's going to be bound to a single-stranded DNA molecule. So at this point, the chromosome, the double-stranded, two strands have separated, melted apart, and um, it's going to load to the single strand. So it's important to know that DNA B requires DNA C bound to ATP um, to allow it to bind. So what's going to happen is DNA B, DNA C bound to ATP are going to come in. ATP is going to be hydrolyzed. And then DNA C, ADP, and a free inorganic phosphate are going to exit. DNA B is still bound, and it'll be allowed to begin its helicase activity. Okay, so at this point in DNA replication, we're through with the initiation phase, and we're in the elongation phase. Now, because this is biochem, I'm going to assume that we've all learned about DNA replication before. I'm not going to go into um, details about the process. But just as a really quick review, we know that DNA is always synthesized in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So um, th during replication, we're going to have a leading strand and a lagging strand. The leading strand, DNA, is synthesized continuously, and in the lagging strand, it occurs in short little fragments called Okazaki fragments. Um, so instead, I'm just going to go over the enzymes that are important to DNA replication and that you should know the functions of. So we have topoisomerases, and um, you might have heard these referred to as DNA gyrase in your classes before. Um, topoisomerases alleviate DNA supercoiling by nicking the DNA backbone and allowing them to unwind. So if you think of you know, a rope getting twisted up really tight, this just cuts the rope so it, you can pull them apart and they're not as um, tightly twisted. DNA B, as mentioned before, um, is also called helicase. And DNA B underwinds DNA and promotes strand melting at the replication fork. We went over this earlier. And you also need to know about several DNA polymerases. So DNA polymerase, um, we're going to go over the differences between them, but there are at least five that we know of. And um, we'll start with the first one, DNA polymerase 1. So DNA polymerase 1 removes the RNA primers and fills the gap with DNA. In case you forgot, um, DNA replication requires a short RNA primer to begin so that the um, free nucleotides can add to, they need an end to add to, they can't just 
add immediately to the parent DNA. They need a short RNA primer, and then DNA polymerase 1 goes in, removes these primers. Um, DNA polymerase 2 is involved in DNA repair, and we're going to go over that a little later on in the video. And we also have DNA polymerase 3. And this is the one that you probably learned the most about. Um, it's the most involved with DNA replication and also proofreading. It's very important to know that DNA polymerase 3 has a 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity. When you hear that 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity, you know that it's involved in proofreading. So just remember that for your exam. Um, there's also DNA polymerase 4 and 5, but you don't really need to know this much about these. Um, they're involved in special types of DNA repair that you're not required to know about. So all of these enzymes together, along with DNA ligase, which goes in and fills the gaps um, left by um, the RNA primers where they, were, where they were removed and DNA was filled in, and also from where the Okazaki fragments were, um, there's going to be gaps in the DNA. DNA ligase comes in and kind of joins it all together. I was, was taught DNA ligase is the glue. Um, so all of these enzymes together along with DNA ligase form the replosome. So you need to know about all of these, um, their functions, and how they're important to DNA replication. Okay, so there's another enzyme that you need to know about that's involved in the termination of DNA replication. So after um, DNA replication is almost finished, you're going to have something that looks like this. So this is the original circular um, chromosome. This is the daughter one that was made, and they're still joined together. Here, this is where it's just finishing up. So DNA um, topoisomerase 4 is responsible for separating the um, parent and daughter chromosomes from each other, and we call these catenated. So DNA topoisomerase 4 comes in and separates the catenated chromosomes.